Okay, this is Taffy. That's me. Notice the resemblance. Remember I told you people tend to pick dogs that look like them. You be the judge, I'm not sure. Anyway, look how tall this dog is. Because she's part Chihuahua and part deer, I think. Um, okay, so let's do a problem with this. And we're going to use standard deviation and z-score. And I cannot express strongly enough how important it is that you really have a firm understanding of this. I'm going to work with it a lot. So, let's do this. Let's just say that the average size, height for this breed, whatever it is, is, oh, 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters. And the standard deviation, how much it varies, the spread, is plus or minus 4 centimeters. Okay, and then we're just going to say that this particular dog, Taffy, is 30 centimeters. Okay, let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's just assume that this is a normal graph, meaning it's perfectly symmetrical, and where would 25 be? That would be right in the middle. And then one standard deviation on either side is going to be plus or minus 4 centimeters. So that's going to be uh, 29 to 21 centimeters. So what we're saying is most of the dogs, 68% of the dogs of this breed, fall somewhere in between this range, somewhere between 21 and 29 centimeters. Now, if we go out another standard deviation, that would be what we add for. So that's going to be 33 and we take away 4, which is going to be 17. Now we have, well, 95% of the dogs of this breed are somewhere between 17 centimeters and 33 centimeters. And then if we go one more standard deviation, so we add another 4 to 33 over here, which is 37. And then down here we're going to say, well, teeny tiny dog, which is what, uh, 13 centimeters? Whoa, that is a small dog. Okay, that pretty much gets all the dogs. 99.7% of the dog. Oh, whoa. 99.7% of the dogs are somewhere between 13 and 37. Where does Taffy belong? So it looks like Taffy is just outside of that first standard deviation. Could we estimate what her percentile is? Well, let's normalize this thing. And what we do with that is we find the z-score. So what we're doing here is we're really just changing this graph instead of these values. We want them to be the values of the standard deviation. So if Taffy was exactly 25, she would have a standard deviation of zero. She doesn't deviate, standard deviation. How far does it deviate from the middle? Zero. She has no deviation. Okay, so, um, but she actually does. She's at 30. So let's do the z-score. And the way we do that is we say, okay, number we're interested in minus the average divided by the standard deviation. And that gives us 1.25. So that is the z-score, 1.25. So if we draw the graph again, let me see if I can draw a nice symmetric graph, sort of, okay. So right in the middle is zero. And here we are at one standard deviation, so she's at right up here at 1.25. What is her percentile? Meaning, let's think about the area of the graph that's below Taffy's z-score. And remember, we think of the area of the graph as 1. So is it, what, 0 0.8, 80% of the graph? 85, something like that. Well, we're going to use a calculator. So remember, 
these two graphs are basically the same. We're just looking at the actual values of the heights of dogs. And this is really a standard deviation um, graph. So that's why we take these numbers and calculate how many standard deviations, okay, 1.25 times 4 above the average. Okay, and we use the calculator. And what we do is, right here, we press second, vars, distribution. We're going to go to the second one, which is normal CDF. I just changed this to negative 100. That's negative 100 standard deviations below the average, way down here, right? So we're going to make sure we get all of this stuff to 1.25. So it's calculating the area from here to here. What is that area of that graph? Which is essentially the same thing as the percentile. And it turns out that the percentile is point, whoops, point eight nine. So in other words, she's at the 89th percentile. 89% of the dogs are smaller than her, or less tall, I guess, shorter. So that's how you find out percentile. But what if we went the other way? What if we said we have the percentile and we want to figure out what the z-score is? Well, let's do a separate problem on that. And I'll try to make this a little quicker. So, let's say your neighbor has the same kind of dog and they say they've never measured her, but this vet says that she's in the 75th percentile for height. Okay, maybe we can figure out how tall she is. So, we've already got the percentile. 75% of this graph, right? 75% of this area. Like that. So, could we go backwards? We already have the percentile to get the z-score. And, yes, we can. We're going to use the calculator for that. So, same thing. We go second distribution. As the third one down is inverse norm. And we know the area is 75%, 75% of this area, right? Where is the z-score? Well, if we press enter a bunch of times, it'll tell us it is 67.4. So when you put that in the calculator, you get 0.674. What does that mean? Well, it means it's this dog is 0.674 standard deviations above the average. So, standard deviation was 4. Multiply that by 0.674. What do we get for that? 2.69. 2.69. So, the average was 25, right? The average was 25, and this dog is 2.69 centimeters above the average. So we just add that together and we get 27.69 centimeters. That's how tall that dog is. Okay, that's a lot, but guess what? We got to work at this stuff. That's how we get better at it. Okay, see you later.